Are you ready to die? To die to the ongoing temptations to sin. Are you ready to die for that? Are you ready to die to fame and glamour and prestige? This, this, is, not, this is not the health and wealth gospel, you see. I, I don't know what health and wealth gospel is do with a passage like this. What are you prepared to give up for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of maintaining a godly testimony to Jesus Christ? If you come to me, Jesus says, you've got to be ready to die. You've got to be ready to put remaining sin to death. You've got to be ready to mortify sin. To kill a sin or a part of a sin every day. To lay that axe at the root of that tree until that tree comes down. It's a, a lifelong calling. It may mean, do you see, that you have to speak out. To speak out for truth. To speak out for orthodoxy. To speak out for the gospel. To speak out for the honor and integrity of Christ. Not just against the world, but sometimes against the church. Sometimes against those who should know better. Are you ready to take up a cross? Are you ready to die? Are you ready to take the road that is right if it costs you something of fame and glamour? What did Jesus do? Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He, he didn't have to reach out and grab hold of deity because it was already His. But He made Himself nothing. King James says he made himself of no reputation. He literally in the Greek, he emptied himself. That needs to be interpreted. He humbled himself. He made himself nothing. C can, you, can you imagine? Can you imagine the conversation in heaven between the Father and the Son in the covenant of redemption before the foundation of the world and the Father says, Son, I want you to become the Savior. And the Son says, Yes, Father, I will do that. And the Son says, But here are my conditions. I don't want to be born in a stable in Bethlehem for a start. I want a suite of midwives and the best technology. I don't want to grow up in that hovel of a place in Nazareth. There's nothing there. I want, I want to be in the big city where there's power and influence. I want our friends. We could go on and on. He made himself nothing. He was made the off-scouring of the world. To be ridiculed and mocked spat upon and derided and rejected and crucified and dead and buried. He made himself nothing. He didn't stand upon his rights. We know our rights. We know our rights in the home. 
We know our rights as a husband. We know our rights as wives. We know our rights as parents. We know our rights in the workplace. We've got our rights. We've got our sense of entitlement. Do you know what it means to be a Christian? Not to stand upon your rights. You you have your rights, and you have a good conscience about your rights, but you don't stand on them. You don't play one-upmanship. You take the path of suffering. You take the path of being prepared to be nothing for Jesus' sake. There's opposition, for sure. Another feature of this passage. He will defeat every hostile force. I build my church, and what does he say? And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Thomas Akempis once said, if you bear the cross, it will bear you. If you bear the cross, it will bear you. He has spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in the cross. The Christian life, my dear friends, is a call to suffering. You know, we we get so hung up about suffering, we say, Why do I suffer? But you know, if you read the New Testament, it's perfectly simple. You are united to Jesus who suffered in this world. So why do you find it odd that you also suffer? The world and the gates of hell are in opposition to Jesus and everything that is Jesus's, including you and me. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised, my friends, if, if following Jesus brings suffering and trial and difficulty and hostility. But know this. Know this. It's worth it. What is there that you wouldn't give up for Jesus? And you know, he says, and he takes your breath away, that no one has given up lands and family and goodness knows what, but that in the world to come, they will receive a hundredfold. I tell you, it's worth it. When you keep your eyes upon Jesus, And look full into his wonderful face. The things of the world grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Our Father, we we know so little, some of us, of what it really means to, to take up a cross. To deny ourselves, we, we so often want to fulfill ourselves. And we know our rights, and we pray for that Jesus likeness. To be ready to make ourselves nothing for the sake of the gospel.